Good evening. I'm Father Russ Carmichael, and this is Street Talk. Thank you very much for letting me in your home again. Uh, we've actually been having a real wild win of a, a whole year. Across from me, I have Dominic Cotton, my co-host, and my special guest tonight, who I uh, put on the spot and, and drive crazy, okay? Uh, 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 I'm man, I'm man, Street Talk's man. I, I have to declare uh, and be honest, uh, okay? We support Michael Passero, and Michael Passero is on tonight. I, I have to tell you that to be honest and be transparent. Uh, you know, we've supported Mike from the first time he ran, watched him and, and, and everything else. And, and some people say I never give him a hard time. He's, I'm easy on him on the show. I don't think that's true. I think I'm fair and, and, and balanced in all the stuff I do. Uh, I mean, we've run a show, as a lot of people have seen this year, more, more people from across the aisle from ever, more heavy politicians in Connecticut than ever. Uh, so some people are finding out that Father's been around a long time and deal with the legislative state house both on not only locally obviously i this is where i live for 12 years now 13 years i guess uh okay okay but i've dealt on the uh, new england level for nearly 50 on the national level uh some 40 35 years with coalitions religious coalitions and ada the american disabilities act and stuff like that so I've been around a long time, and I think that surprised a lot of people. I think, you know, they're starting to see that, uh, you know, Carmichael's only one of the family names. <laughs> We've had people who've ran for office, uh, okay, to the highest level, by the way. Uh, I'm not going to say who, but to the highest level. I have family that are in federal and state offices now. My brother is a, a deputy sheriff in Massachusetts, uh, was uh, alderman in Newton, Mass, uh, ran for uh, Malden Council. So, I mean, politics has been around with me for a long, long time. I didn't, I didn't grow up uh, in a situation where my family wasn't connected with politics, with political been political most all my life in a union person. So I wanted to say that so you you know what uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be hammering at poor Michael tonight a little bit. Uh, okay, Dominic, uh, bless you. He's right across the uh, right across the way. And Michael Passero, you know what I say? We're Passero proud. Good to see you again. Thanks and, for having me back. And glad, yes. and glad you and glad you're back. And, and I know, I got a sign up here that says, follow the mo money, 73%. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna give you a little break first. You, know, you can tell me what's going on uh, right now, how you're feeling, wh where the campaign is, and, you know, and, and what's going on with you before I get into a couple of questions that, you know. You might hit me on the head for it. But okay. Okay. You want to talk about the campaign or the city? Well, well, I want to talk a little bit about your campaign. Okay. The, okay. I, I couldn't be happier with the campaign. It's, uh -huh. uh, it's, been, a, it's been two months. Yeah. Uh, I have an amazing team uh, that's working incredibly hard. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's an eye-opener for me what kind of an operation uh, has developed uh, and what kind of an operation it takes to, uh, to do something like that. Uh, uh, that's the... Uh, unintended gift of our, of our new former government. We actually have a competitive uh, political contest for the, the top uh, position in the city now. Um, and um, I'm honored to be, to have the support that I have and, uh, and uh, certainly appreciative of all the people that are working incredibly hard to, uh, uh, to help me do this. So. It, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of work. A lot of people don't realize, especially when you go from counselor and stuff like that. But when you step into a mayor's position now, the, of course it's new here for New London and, and stuff like that. Stuff really starts to, <laughs> to 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 build up. Takes money. I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit about money. That's the reality of politics. Takes money. Take, takes 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 a lot of people, as you know. I, I know that uh, I, when I was reading in the paper, uh, uh, 
Kavanaugh, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh, my, my buddy, said that uh, you had about 60 people working for you or something like that. And I said, well, yeah, but he didn't count our organization, who totally supports you and everything. Uh, I okay. think what he's, what he's counting there yeah. is the people that are essentially uh, showing up at showing the up, meetings exactly and right. have formed committees. Yeah, yeah. And it, it does not take into account a lot of the grassroots work that's uh, also being also done. Also being done, right, uh, right. Outside of that. And well, I, I mean, I am, I am pleased. Uh, myself, I mean, you, you know, I, I and and I, I again, I did want to talk about his campaign because, yeah, you know, we watched Michael from the beginning, from your first campaign. You know, we didn't know much about Michael and stuff like that, but felt that he had a good background. Obviously, his education background, and I got firemen in my family, and I know that they're kind of crazy people that run into things while people are running away. So, so we we really we went with Michael and watched. Michael throughout your career and have been absolutely happy with you not always agreeing not always agreeing you and I were uh, in opposition over the uh, uh, the uh, the park okay we were on different oh sides. you I keep forgetting about that you <laughs> on the side of the side. Uh, that's right but I'll you know something that, the, but, you the know. community was evenly split on we that were, yeah, we were as right. we saw when the votes were counted the 19th, first vote right. was in favor this yeah, when they did the recount the second, it was right. Uh, maybe a dozen votes yeah. or uh, 16 or 17 votes separating the thing. And um, uh, one of the proud things I am uh, about the campaign I'm running now is, um, it, you know, when we all get together in the room are the people that are on both sides uh, of an issue, and especially an issue like that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm pleased to have that. Uh, well, I was too. When I come around, once you, once you get the vote down and you lose the vote, you know, my belief is, and a lot of people don't understand that. When, when, you, when you lost, you had the fight, you had a good fight, we were in the ring, boom. Now you get together and, and, and you go out and do something about it. You, you know, this is what the people voted for, this is what we want. Okay, so let's make, make it work. Um, the, well, the fact that people can disagree with me on one issue but still respect my abilities and uh, understand that hey, I'll be with them on the next issue. Um, that, I think that's an, that's an important fact. Well, I, I look at yours as, as a total open tent. I, I, I mean, I, I, I view your campaign and all that you've done has been open to everybody. I know you've reached out to everybody. Uh, I, I know from, especially my marginalized people, you know, where I, where I work with and stuff like that. I know they've gone to you. You, you do a lot of help, uh, uh, help, help with that, that situation. And a lot of people don't pay attention to them because a lot of them don't vote. I mean, you really got to push them out to vote and train them to vote and take their hands and, 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 and teach them. So it's not a, you know, they're, they're, they're a different uh, breed, let's say, you know. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, that speaks to leadership. That you, to be able to pull people in, I, I know Father and I do a lot of stuff uh, and we reach across the aisle and uh, we, we certainly take in a, to points, different points of view with, with, with people and, and quite often, where you think people might be far apart, they, they really aren't. They're, they're actually pretty close together. But well, you don't want to burn a bridge when you're waging no. a battle on this, in this, on this issue. You don't want to alienate your opposition. Uh, you want to be fair. You disagree mm -hmm. on the issue. You don't, it doesn't mean you don't respect each other. That's right. And you don't know tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to, you're, you're going to need that person's support on another issue. Um, and you're going to want to work together with them. So you don't want to burn it on one issue. I, you know, I was criticized by my opposition because, you know, God forbid, there might have been uh, Republicans at a fundraiser I've had, or, um, or uh, I believe my, my supporters were characterized as supporters of eminent domain uh, fundraisers and um, some other category. That's right. But guess what? Happy to accept the support, but also in the room were the people like myself who d opposed eminent domain. Um, and, um, you know, there were people in the room that supported selling Riverside Park and people like myself who did not support it. And, and certainly I was the most vocal and the leader in starting that um, opposition to that, uh, uh, you know, to that, uh, that movement to sell. And I can understand the other side's part. I can understand supporting an institution as important as the Coast Guard Academy. I can ex understand their needs, but I, you know, I just had a different opinion. You had a different opinion, clearly a different opinion on that, and and, and, and uh, obviously the, the the vote went down. We lost, and uh, and, and so it goes. But yeah, I was actually the reason I was talking about that. I was responding to what I saw in the article that talked about the old god. You're bringing mm -hmm. the old god back and everything. I was really offended.
did with that. I guess I'm probably part of the new guy. I don't know where we are. Uh, okay, I don't think we're a lot of people. We're the dysfunctional guard. Dysfunctional guard, right? But I, I was a well, little you know, aggravated you can, you that. Can, you know, you know, you can. I mean, you can be the type of leader where you try and you divide people in order to win your point mm -hmm. of view, and you right. pit one faction against another. Or you can be the type of leader where you're trying to unite people. Exactly. You're not trying to drive divisions between them. Right, right. And I'm hearing just too much of, of trying to divide us by categories, right. whatever category. And we can all be put into one or more <laughs> particular <laughs> pigeonholes. So exactly. So let's, let's pick out what pigeonhole you're going to put me in and then make, you know, make me that, and that's only me. Yeah, yeah. Now you're making people into caricatures. Then people are more complex than that. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and that's... Uh, and again, it was two articles that I had read, and both of them, uh, obviously. One was a money factor, which I was really aggravated about, because I, I looked at it, of how we raise money. And I think that was in that article that talked about, uh, you, you know, the old guy donating to your campaign and, and, and stuff like that. When, and I put, follow the money up there, because as a political person, uh, okay, 73% of your opposition's money comes from outside the city. It's, it's outside the city. It's not people who have investments here. And their business investments are from out, out the side of the city. And that really bothers me because I know, and we should know, we've got a lot of projects that are going to be coming to this city over the next five or ten years. Big stuff that should be the people who are here, even the unemployed here that need, are going to need jobs, should be, be the ones that are going to benefit from what's going to happen here in New London. I want to ensure that, okay? And I don't want outside sources, okay? Or at least I want to know and I want to clearly see who the outside sources are because money does buy influence. It's, it, 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 real, it really does. I got to be careful when I say that to you because I... You're a different type of politician I, 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 that, uh, 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 that most people are with. Usually your major fundraisers get behind you and you're going to be following what they say. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the, the law requires us to release a list of everybody that's right. donated. We, you can't write a, a check or give any money in any form to a political campaign without filling out this form, as you yeah. you <laughs> folks are. are yeah, and anybody that's given to a political, <laughs> anybody that's given to a political campaign yeah. knows about the form you have to fill yeah. out uh, for a campaign. It's right. um, it's really aggravating to have to get people to fill it out, but you have to. You can't take the check or any of the money without it, and it doesn't matter if it's five dollars. You got to fill out the form. Right. You don't have to. You don't have to list your donors if it's under fifty dollars. It's my understanding. Mm -hmm. But every campaign, or I noticed that my opposition's campaign did. We certainly did because you want to show that people are giving uh, what they can afford and right. they support your campaign. So I'm also proud that you'll find a lot of the small donors on my list. We turned in our first. Uh, quarterly state reports December 31st. That's what created the article that you're referring to. Right. And I'm enormously proud of the list of supporters that I had shown by the money um, that yeah, they gave. Yeah, yeah. And you really only have to give $5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so everybody, sh you know, everybody that participates in politics, um, if, you, if you don't know how, uh, if you haven't seen one of those forms, it means you're not quite participating completely because it doesn't mean you have to uh, you know, bankrupt yourself to support your candidate, but no, it no. just takes five dollars and fill out a form, and your and your allegiance is is um, is right there. It's it's public, and you're standing with your with the candidate. It, you we do because we know because we we work in the disability factors, and we visit different. In fact, I I think I voted. I, 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 this year I donated on uh, several Republicans that I normally wouldn't. Okay, yeah, we both did. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but they were on our issue and they really yeah. did help us. And it wasn't not a lot of money, it was 20 something bucks or something like that. But it was a thank you for, you know, for, for them uh, being on our issue with the disabilities and stuff like that. And, and, and the, the state system works differently, though, too. The, yeah. the state well, system, because it's publicly financed, it works differently. They have an obligation to get small money donors. And a, I don't know all the particulars, but they ha they're under pressure because they have to collect so much oh, yeah, money yeah, for the in under $50 it's, it's, donate. It's, uh, so for, for representatives, it's about $5,000. I think it's from yeah. 
I think, 100 or, or 200 uh, different different sources that are like, you know, the right. under and certain they, they make it tough. They make yeah. it show that you're not just getting, yeah. uh, you're not just hiring a professional consultant, hint, hint, who yeah. then brings into your campaign tens of thousands of dollars because that's basically what his job is. You hired him and then he hits up uh, people to, to throw in the big money. The state makes the, our state reps prove that they have local support from, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And, yeah. and well, I think small the, the other part of it too is, uh, and we certainly saw this in the, in the governor's race, um, how much outside money, you know, almost like feels like an irritant with the way that people try to push their points of view from, from the far outside, you know, with the amount of money that poured into some of the state elections, you know, talking about things that have nothing to do with points of view from people from Connecticut. And, I, and I'm, I look at that and I say that's something similar that you're seeing here. That, 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 that's, what, that's what the problem is. But that has happened all across the country now. There's big yeah. talk about it, trying to do legislation about that stuff. Uh, okay, and, and of course, because of my sensitivity, because of on the state level and sure. watching where it comes, and on the national level, big time, huge amounts of money pouring into campaigns. Uh, you know, you a couple of brothers, you got a billionaires, you can uh, finance a whole bunch of people for office. And and obviously, those people owe them money. They ain't giving you that kind of money unless you're going to toe the line with what they, they want. Mm -hmm. That that takes away your representation, and I, I don't like it. What I love to see, and was, that was the best thing I said was I looked at the paper, and I, of course, I went down, I divided it up, and I crossed everything out, and I looked at who was doing what and how much, and I was real, I was so, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, what a grassroots group you got going here that's really good, and where your, where, where your money is coming from versus, uh, okay, where uh, Mr. Finozio's money's coming from. And, uh, I don't know, Farina is a uh, that professional uh, uh, campaign uh, group. Uh, it, that's what it seemed like it said in the paper, that his, his uh, political consultant, and he had a lot of big donors, you know, a, a grant's a lot of money. You know, you know when you've got 11 people cracking a grand, uh, 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 you know, on a $19,000... I'll, I'll be donating thing. to your campaign, Michael, but it's not going to be a $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know. If I had it, I would. But you know, <laughs> people, have, people do say to me, what can I do for you? How, you know, I want to give you a donation. Yeah. Uh, you know, what can I do for you? And I tell them, just please don't give me more than $1,000 because you, you, that's your limit. <laughs> yeah, it's your limit. You, and they, they usually go pale. <laughs> well, if you're a union, I know. If you're a union, yeah, yeah, obviously... You Union uh, or an organization like that, uh, you can you can do more, right? Uh, um, I, I, no, I'm not sure. And you know what's nice about okay. you know what's nice. Uh, um, our campaign is very organized, and oh. so we have we have a person who's assigned to make sure that we don't go afoul of all of those things. So I, w I wouldn't guess at that. I would I say mean, you know, I mean, the treasurer is responsible to make sure that that, 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 that all those regulations. Right, and they're right. very you know they're 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 not that easy to fi follow. Oh, oh no, I, it is complicated. I, I, I remember when I was making out a donation. You know, make, Father, make sure you do this. <laughs> Give me a paper right like there. Yeah, don't worry about it. I, I, yeah, well, we got to right, we, we worry about it. Yeah, the most unpopular person in a campaign, if they're doing is, their job properly, is the treasurer. Is the treasurer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Ex exactly. Right. She, you know, he or she is the one that has to rain on everybody's parade and everybody's great idea and, and uh, to help and you know, break it, break the news to them that, you know, no, that's, you can't do that. Well, do that. well, I got you on tonight anyways, and I, I did follow them and do the follow the money. And I, of course, even, even though we, we love you and we're supporting you, we, we're watching you too. <laughs> 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 Father watches everybody with that money. And, and we're going to do a couple of shows. We're going to talk about election. I think we're going to talk about how it works with Gail. Uh, we, we talked about doing it with Gail. We, we, we talked about uh, how, how bills work How in bills go in and stuff, yep. and how government operates. That's what, that mm -hmm. was my thing with them. And, of course, part of that is how you raise money for your campaign and what you're doing. So aside from that, um, okay, we'll get off the money, uh, okay, where are we with city stuff? Well, um, I'm fresh off of a school building and maintenance committee meeting today, which that's, uh, you know, an important committee that everybody should pay attention to. 
Um, and I think it's more or less in the background. A lot of people don't know about it. So I'll I'll start, we'll start there since I'm fresh off the monthly meeting for that. Um, and that's, um, that's the committee that's going to be responsible for overseeing this next school construction project, a $168 million project. Uh, today was um, a big day. The, the uh, subcommittee that is going to be uh, selecting the architect for that project, architect or architects, there may be two, mm -hmm. because there's two phases. There's the high school phase, and then there's the middle school Benny Dover Jackson renovation phase. Um, the, the construction is not going to necessarily go along simultaneously. The high school is going to go first, and we're going to phase in the middle school project. But um, you know, the design and the lead time on both projects is, both projects, some phases of both projects will be going on simultaneously, but the construction phases will not necessarily. Um, so we, we picked the, um, uh, the architect selection committee met for the first time uh, uh, this, this morning after the school building and maintenance committee. I think two issues that people are, are, are following closely um, is, well, what's the status of Veterans Field? If you remember, Veterans Field was, um, uh, taken away from Parks and Rec right. and used by the city right. to facilitate first the Jennings School construction right. project and then the 21st Century uh, School construction project, which is Nathan Hale and Winthrop, which is the two projects that we are, uh, the schools are, are done, the schools are operating and running, and we're winding down the actual construction projects. And there's some, t it take, there's a tail at the end of that that has to be finished up, finish up our grants, recovering our grant money from the state. And those projects are in that phase. Um, but it's time to think about, well, what are we going to do now? Veterans Field, we have the portable classrooms off of Veterans Field, and right. it's sitting there, and it needs money to put it back to a playing field. Which and somewhere in the process, and it started well before my time, right. I, ca I came on the scenes because there's so much lead time in these construction projects take so, much year so many years. I came on the scene, um, the Winthrop School, Nathan Hale School project, Nathan Hale hadn't started construction, but with it was underway. Of course, all the planning and everything was 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 already uh, was already complete, and the, we were into, well into the construction phase when I first got elected. Um, and when I got on the school building and maintenance committee uh, two or three years ago, uh, Winthrop was nearing completion of construction, and Nathan Hale was beginning to start. Um, somewhere in the course of these three school construction projects. Um, the money that was supposedly set aside to restore the field at the end of the, the project field, right, right. Uh, isn't there anymore. Uh -huh. Because it was supposed to be part of the Jennings School construction project, and as we know, that project went seriously bad right. as far as the management of it. Um, and it it's, was only last year that we finally came to an agreement with the state and finished closing out that project in order to recover the, the, uh, the rest of the millions of dollars that was owed to the city of New London. Not, no fault of the state that we didn't get the money. It was the fault of our management of the school construction project. You have to file um, with the office of school construction to draw down the grants that you've been promised. And if you don't provide the paperwork that, that's required, you're they're not, not going to get it. You're not going to get the you're money. Not, and that's right. helpful to the taxpayers right. to know to that know there's that, no fraud right? involved. Right, right. That's not fraud, but you're not going to get it. You miss those timelines. Uh, the government's like a pain in the butt. Our people don't understand that. Yeah. They think, oh, somebody stole it. No, no, that, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, once you get in this, 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 um, this latest school construction project that we're just getting underway, $168 million. It's actually $148 million is the grant that was filed with the state. So now, and that's the grant that we're trying to get moved on to the priority list so that we can start the project this year. We're not on the priority list because, because of the referendum. Put right. the, you had the, the, the authorization for the, for the money had to be uh, completed. The process had to be completed in the town by June 30th. The city council voted to, to appropriate the bond money uh, by June 30th, but then it got referendum and that made the vote of the council null and void until the referendum passed. So theoretically, we, until November 4th, we didn't do what we needed to do as far as the state regulations yes, right. go. And the regulations are the regulations. So now there's some, uh, there's a good deal of optimism that the legislature will, you know, will just put us on that priority list legislatively when they approve the list during mm -hmm. this uh, legislative session. So we, we, you know, we're we're moving forward with a great deal of confidence that that's going to happen. Um, 
But anyway, back to Veterans Field. We need the money for Veterans Field. Well, there is, fortunately, the, Jenning, the uh, Winthrop School and the um, Nathan Hale School projects have been managed properly. And all of the bond appropriation money for those school projects um, has not been used and will, will not be used, So, which is nice. But the way the law works, if you bond money for a particular project, uh, you have to use it for that project, or if there's excess money at the end, it, it, the, the use of that money is only for that project. So if you don't need it and there's money left, it has to be put back to pay down the debt. In other words, you never use it. You never use mm -hmm. it, okay. Uh, you, you, either never, it never, you never actually bond it, because you, you, you wouldn't necessarily say 60, that's a $60 million project. The way it turns out, we actually never bonded the whole $60 million and never will because we were closing out the projects and we will not have need you for all of the authorization. All the okay. But it's nice to have a little cushion cushion yeah, right, in case, right. uh, case things will go. So what we're essentially doing is using that cushion to go ahead and restore those fields as part of closing out these school, school construction projects. And the, the Building and Maintenance Committee recognized that's our obligation. We can't just close out these projects now we're done, we don't need the field, and then just leave that and mess leave it, right, for the city right. side to fix. And now that just becomes a capital need in a list of all the other capital needs that our city has, which we can't, you know, where, when is that going to get put on the whist list? Yeah, right. So, right. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's exciting. We've hired the architect. They're in the design phase. Uh -huh. We should have construction plans uh, within a month or two, and we're really hoping to get that project underway uh, during the next construction season. That's our goal because if we, you know, the way this works in New England, if we don't gear up, if we don't get everything ready, um, and they can't get started early enough in the construction season, right. then you're put off another whole year. Another year. Right so right. the hope is that the summer of 2015, the neighbors in that Cedar Grove neighborhood will see that project it's underway. underway. Yeah. All goes well. We'll have it seeded for the good growing season in, in uh, October for grass, and then yeah. it's just a matter of waiting oh, for the they'll field. Be, they'll be happy over there. I mean, they, they've been really waiting for that a long time. Obviously, a lot of people over there are uh, so angry. They're just angry at where they felt they were lost and they were out. And, well, uh, be, you, you, cu you yeah. couple that field uh -huh. with the situation at Edgerton School, uh -huh. and that's, that's a blight on that neighborhood. Yeah, That's yeah, a terrible yeah, blight, yeah, and, uh -huh. yeah. you know, we're addressing it. Yeah. Deliberately, deliberately looking to affect that right. that area. Okay. So the other the other piece is um, the connection of one of the goals, one of the reasons for keeping Riverside Park was initially the Edgerton School project, which is uh, uh, you know science a STEM high a STEM, STEM uh, elementary yeah, school, right. was having that park next door, right, and being being able to utilize that park as part of the curriculum, right, science, and that right. was the original goal before. Uh, the academy decided that it also needed the park to expand its campus. Yeah, right. So as Which. that public debate was being waged, the school project is moving along, and they dropped the curriculum part of the of the school plans that included the park because they didn't know whether we were going to own the park or not. Oh. So we've now gone back since we have the park, and they the the um, administration and the board of ed has recreated that curriculum based on use of this outdoor uh, park. You know this facility. outdoor beautiful Grand nature. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and as part of that, uh, we're applying to the state for the final phase of the Winthrop School construction project to connect the park to the school. Right now, if you go to the end of the school boundary, right. there's a everything's beautiful and there's a beautiful gate. But if you open that gate. It's, it's a washed out ravine yeah, and it's right. just, um, there's no way you can communicate from the, from the school property into the park safely. Right. And certainly not to use that. Um, and so the architects are designing a connection between the, um, the school property and into the park. And we're working on that now and it, it includes some legal technicalities. We have to actually transfer part of the park property uh -huh. uh, to, the, to become part of the campus of the school. Okay. And then this, as part of the, the Winthrop School project is 90% reimbursable or 95% reimbursable. And so as uh, once the school grant is approved for this, uh, the state will be picking up that much of the tab of this final phase of the project, which, co which will connect that school with, will, with the park. Will, will there be a way to get us down to the water? through that? Do, that you, do you know? That will not be part of the yeah, Winthrop School, okay, won't be part but of the, that. that is certainly um, 
a dream of the Riverside Park Conser oh, Conservancy. Conserves, yeah, and, you know, they, they have long-term goals. And right. simultaneously with this project, they are drawing up plans with the same architect for a long-term vision of improvements to the park. Well, I, I like that because that's continuity, and I like continuity of, from one person to another. Right? You know, and yeah, there's a, a, there's time, a good a there's good deal a, of collaboration, collaboration between there both. and everything, so right. everything flows good when when you do something like that. That's, and it's that's important right. because this school this school community uh -huh. um, is going to be utilizing that park and bringing life into that park, and we're going to be bringing our children up with a respect for, and they'll be learning about nature and and all sorts of things. Well, I, that affects the whole area down there. I mean, we're talking Hodges Square, too. You know, I mean, you're right around the corner you, and, and stuff like that. I mean, you start focusing, you know, things kind of spread out, you know, like it grows. And, 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 and I'm hoping things get done around that area and done, done down there and, and, and uh, get better developed. And, uh, of course, I don't know where the Coast Guard is talking about. They're still talking about placing the training center someplace and I, I still I haven't, haven't I haven't heard any more about that I know well, one thing I know. one thing I learned during that debate is they it wasn't <clears throat> it was somewhere 10 years out anyway that's right on the planning that's horizon now yeah uh, I had a talk <clears throat> with um, and I'm forgetting the name now and I, I would know it as well as I know my own but the Admiral before Admiral yeah. Stowe's uh, if you remember his name. I can't really... Oh, uh, Burho? Burho. Right, yeah, Admiral Burho. Yeah, Admiral Burho. You know, I had a talk with him during that uh, when that campaign was going on for or against the Riverside Park sale. I had a good deal of respect for the man. Um, yeah. I'm not sure why they wouldn't consider the Eastern Avenue area of the... Did I forget to shut my phone off? <laughs> there you go. Sorry, That's what Angie sorry does about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I you, love it. Uh, Angie does that. If you're, calling in, uh, if you're calling into the show, uh, don't call my cell phone. <laughs> call the Metrocast call, number. Yeah, it's on the, the screen. on the screen. Let us know you're out there listening. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, it's on vibrate now. Okay. So, okay. Um, so if you think about it, if you know the area, right. there's a gate. Right. Um, at the southern boundary southern of the academy border. grounds, I, I down by that. the river. Right. And then there's um, actually a road that goes from right. there to um, Adelaide Street. That's right, exactly. Okay, and then Adelaide Street communicates with that neighborhood where the old Thames shipyard is. Exactly is that, right. Yeah, that's that right. what it was? Thames yeah, shipyard? Yeah, the yeah. shipyard thing and all that area yeah. in there. And it's actually beautiful, bulkheaded, deep water um, waterfront there uh, right. on the other side of the train tracks. There's also a, 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 a liquor distributor there. Uh -huh. uh, on the other side of the train tracks. Uh -huh. It's a very industrial it neighborhood. It's industrial neighborhood. There's it's some, industrial. It's mixed right. use. There's some residential. Right. There's also um, on the next street over, there's a couple of club. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Polish club, club is there, and the uh, I don't know if it's the Elks or the uh, other one that's across the street from there. Right, that old area, right. Yeah, so yeah. It's, that area is a bit depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it could use a uh, beautiful new building. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. I really, I, and it's close enough to the academy. I mean, we can, sh I, I think we could share. We could share the, uh, the, oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. the right of way. The right of way and yeah. the walkway so. and everything. That would make a great, uh, they, they could, they could extend the walkway and, and stuff like that. I, I, I don't exactly know, I, I, I wasn't sure because of the type of training facility it is that they wanted that kind of kind of close and guarded kind of thing. Well, the, be, the, they, be, well, the, but, the but, problem, the problem is the topography of Riverside Park is yeah. not exactly, I think there's a reason that that land is still sitting there undeveloped. Oh, yeah. You know, actually, it, uh, it was originally 90 acres. Yeah, oh, is that, that right? Park, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. 90 acres. And so, um, you know, you know, we're down to what's left of it. I can't remember the number anymore. But, but it, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting once, you know, you know, once we lost, <laughs> and, and once they talked about it, then they were kind of letting it go for a while. I was a little. I said, hey, you know, if we, if we you want it, you want it. Let let let's get them get the money, let's do something with it. You know, no, whatever we gotta do politically, let's raise the money. You, you won, we got it, let's develop it, and, le and let's make it a cool place and nice, and, a nice thing. And then with, obviously, with all the other development that we got going on, uh, I don't think a lot of people know the extent of, uh, of the development that is going to impact our area, say, over the next five, 10, 10 years, from the deep water port, I, I, I mean, we knew, I mean, 
our folks knew that was coming due to the Panama Canal expansion and bigger, that w there was going to be more uh, uh, opportunity for the deep water port, which has to be dredged out for products to come in here. But we knew, uh, uh, going back 10 years, you knew that was coming along, and if you're following the plans, you had to understand, well, you get products to the shore here with the great deep water port that we have. They're not as big, you know, with the smaller vessels that can come in, uh, okay, but then you needed to get the product out of here. So that meant you had to shore up all the rail because that's how the best transportation. So if you were thinking and you were talking continuity you, and you could see, you know, father wish he was 26 and an investor uh, and rather than his age now, that, you know, you were going to have to build up strong rails and stuff like that to get your product off and get it shipped all over New England or wherever it's going to go and stuff like that. So we have, and we got the big grants to, to do that to the railway. And then we have the waterway uh, coming in, which they've already gotten money. Uh, God knows how much money for that that's going to happen, a whole waterway, and it could affect the river and everything else like that. A lot of opportunity is coming coming our way. And, 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 and I say that to my, to my voters and my people out there. That's why, that's why you need Michael as the mayor here. That's why you need solid leadership. Right? And, and I don't know, I'm not blowing him smoke or anything else, because he understands the workings of your town. Homegrown, some people get me, I say homegrown, uh, you, you know, is that good or is that bad? Obviously, when, you, you know, when we looked at you and stuff like that, you, you, you know, you're here, you know your town, your involvement in your town, uh, and, and your, fight, your training, your education says, you know, this, I want this guy. I want this guy. He knows what's going on. You, you, you know, you've been here all your life. You know, you know all the ins and outs and stuff like that. That's important when you're doing the kind of. It's 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 you know when it's it's essential. Is is and you you were talking about this before of uh, 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 bringing people together. I, I think uh, when we talk about organizations, I've run large organizations before, and I think when you first come in, if you don't take the time to understand the history and the inner workings of how things are and you just try to cast everything aside and say oh we're, we're out here for a new clean slate you, 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 you lose the intricacies that are involved in properly History, running anything and all that stuff you, you tear up obviously it's a book of I mean you can take the book of leadership that says you do that you go in there I mean I, I've mm -hmm. been across from the man and, and his view was you go in there you know you got problems you get rid of these people boom boom right away and you move forward well you know you're talking government that, that's a business takeover and a model that can work or do you go in there and you say wait a minute you know I got this I, I got this group of people, okay, that I may have some difficulty with, but we can get on the same page, and I can develop them, and I can develop leadership. I mean, that's what I look at, good leadership, and I open up the, you know, if you got a big tent, you, you open up the resources to a lot of people to help you. And I, I, I think when you look at what, I, I think when you really look, what was so good at looking in the paper was looking at your fundraising thing, you could see it. I mean, you could see that there was the diversity of people. I, I, I thought the dig about the old God. I mean, I, I know who the old God is, and I fought with the old God, but I'll go out and march with the old God door to door and stuff like that, with the, okay? Because they want solid change and they care about the city, I, you know? Yeah, well, you make me think of organizations. Uh, one of the longstanding type of organization and models is the, the leadership moves through the chairs, they say. Mm -hmm. So when you want to move up the leadership, if you want to become top dog, you, you have to start off as the, you know, the secretary or the recording secretary, and then you got to move into the you know, social chairman mm -hmm. position, and then you got to move into the vice chairman position. And it takes four or five years, depending on the organization, to move through the chairs to become um, you know, the leader of the group. Uh, but every group needs fresh new blood coming in, and every group is always report is always recruiting. Recruiting, you know, as, always as doing as that. Certainly, right. New London always has, um, and it's also recruiting for new leadership. 
And that shows every year the parties are looking for people to run for office. And I'm telling you, the litmus test has never been how long do you live in New London. <laughs> no, 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 we're no. looking for good you want, people who are really interested, right? Exactly, and interested in, in putting into the work in the work. So, um, I, you know, I think there's a lot of rhetoric that goes along with any campaign, and uh, you know, just trying to throw you know throw stuff out there and and label you know the other side, and there's a lot of that going on. But I think what uh, what we what we can't uh, overemphasize is this is still New London. It's 27,000 people. The election is going to be decided, if we're lucky, by 3,000 people that are going to come out and vote. That's sad, but that's probably sad. the reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about what voted in the last election. If I got it right, I'm thinking, um, no, more. let's say more than that. Let's say 5,000. 5, 5, 5, yeah. So oh, if we do as well as last yeah. time, yeah. Uh, we'll have 5,000. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm confusing it with the primary. You know, the yeah, primary right. was less than 2,000. Oh, I know. The Democratic the pri primary it was very, last time. Yeah, it was very frustrating. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really a business of, of touching people personally. Um, and, at, and I honestly wouldn't know and whether a person has been here five years, ten years, or has lived here the whole life, it's really not a criteria. Uh -huh. It's how, how invested are you today right now? How, how invested are you in participating? I'm going to meet you if you're participating. You yeah, know, we exactly. had a citizen come right. to the school building and maintenance committee meeting today, and you could tell this gentleman knew the issues, and he knew the body he was talking to, and he had a few complaints and a couple of attaboys, but I'm not going to stop and say, geez, I wonder whether he just, how long he's been here. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. No, no. You're, you're going to say to yourself as, wow, this is a go-getter. This I, guy knows what he's talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah you know, yeah, let's sign him up. Sign him up. <laughs> Right? Uh, <laughs> reported, you know, I know right there. <laughs> Good, we got a call. That's, that's, that's what Dominic says. Yeah, you grab anybody you can. If they're interested and they can do the work, you got to believe it. In any organization. In any organization. You know, to be a Jesuit, 13 years of boot camp. A lot of people don't know that. You don't get to be where Frank is, I said, by, uh, you, you know, not knowing what you're doing. Good evening, you're on Street Talk, Father Russ, Mike, and Dominic. Yes, this is for Mike. Yeah. Uh, you did a good job in that dog pound issue. Where you pushed it for quite a while. And in the end, we hired our law director to uh, do an investigation, which was a big mistake. He come back and he says, there were irregularities there and so forth and so on, but what difference does it make? We've been going on for 10, 20 years. So the mayor comes along and he meets out some sudden. One guy gets slapped on the hand, another person gets a piece of paper in his personnel file. Now, I seen you on Kathleen Mitchell's show maybe six months ago. You explained the whole deal. At the end, you put your hands up. He says, what more can I do? The way I see it, there's felony fraud conviction, corruption in there. You don't think there's a basis to bring this to attention to the state's attorney? The, the child was violated so bad. I mean, that'd be a plus. You should stand right up. You've got some lawyer intelligence to this. I mean, you, maybe there isn't some there. I, I, if I was in your shoes, I would step right up to play that. We can't accept that. I won't accept it. I won't accept it for the people in London. We're not talking 10,000, we're talking it cost a couple hundred thousand went in there. And there was corruption there. And there was fraud. And there was felony fraud with uh, warrants could be put, put out to these people. So, and I read an article in the paper last couple of Sundays ago, a guy by the name of Mike Connors. Connors. I don't know if you read that article. Our uh, mayor was running, then he's now... Uh, He's not running, then he's going to run. In between the caption was, the coast is clear. I mean, the dog pound issue died, and he jumped right back in. But he knew there was something going to happen, <laughs> but you guys fizzed out. You went so far. Can you correct me on anything? Well, uh, just a couple of things. And I, I appreciate your point, and uh, it's always a balancing act when you decide, you know, um, 
it, it was it was a judgment call, but a couple of things. Um, the mayor assigned the law director to do the investigation. Certainly, Councillor Olson and myself on the Public Works Committee, that wouldn't have been the way we would have went. Right. But also, you have to understand, and I'm this may sound like an excuse, and I don't intend it to that to be that, but you could take it as that. I won't be offended. Uh, I'm on the council. I'm only one vote of seven. And you're working as a body. And if I've learned anything in the five years I've done this, um, I've learned that you, to accomplish anything, you have to build consensus and you have to collaborate. You, you can't be a lone dog, you know, a lone wolf. Right. You won't get you won't get any support, and you'll become completely ineffective. Well, you got to start, start the fire. Well, uh, we, we, I believe we did. I, I did. believe that we, we, we created a record. And while I don't agree with the law director's conclusions on every point in his report, right. we required that there be a full investigation, and there's a full record of every invoice. Right. There's a full, complete record. Now, I believe personally, and you know, uh, the law enforcement agencies do their work, and I don't. And I, I have faith that that somebody looked at that record to determine if there was criminal conduct. And we never heard any more. And who knows? We may still, because sometimes these things take a while. Uh, but what Councillor Olson and myself did accomplish is we had a full investigation, and I do believe everything was laid out there. I was comfortable that there was not anything that was left out of the official record. Yeah. You, could, you could talk about drawing conclusions or then uh, taking actions, and I'll get back to that. But I felt comfortable that, and the file's that big, and I have it, and it's there for the public, and anybody that wants to know what the facts were, so that then they can draw their own conclusions, at least the facts are there. We, we, after being stymied for months, months and months, right. not being able to even get the invoices, not being able to get the right. facts, not being able to, that's what frustrated me. Once all the facts came out and the report was done, then I felt it was an, somebody else's job, whether it be a law enforcement agency if they looked at it and determined there was uh, some sort of criminal conduct, um, or the city council has no role in discipline. Right. It's not our administration. We have to fund it, right. but we have no role in running it. Was that and available? Certainly, certainly, you know, certainly I was disappointed that there was no, and, that, that, and you know, we're talking about the dog pound, and what happened shortly after that, unfortunately, is we, we lost, we lost human, uh, human life. Floyd yeah, Smeaton. Yeah, exactly Floyd, right. Floyd Smeaton went up to right. the, what, and, this, and this makes the whole yeah. dog pound controversy just pale in comparison. Yeah, exactly. When a citizen can, can go up, to dispose of their waste at the transfer station and, and end up and tragically tragic dead. Yeah. Um, and then you find out that they were warned that this was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And 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 there's been no accountability no. for that. No, no. none. Well, no. well, can't that can't that dog pound be open? Can we open that dog pound again now? The so dog pound. The, well, the dog pound. It can't be a dead issue. You're going to find out. Everybody knew something about that. There's another, there's, another, there's, another point, there's another point about this dog pound issue is um, the fact <clears throat> that they went ahead with the project at all, while at the same time they were giving us lip service about um, the movement right. to regionalize that function of government. Right. Well, that's right. I mean, yeah. That is, and, and we're, we're reading in the paper now how we're losing how out. We're losing out. The other right. time, we didn't have to spend that money at all. We didn't have to uh, spend a dime. Right. What we had to do is we had to get in, get involved with our other neighborhood communities and do the regional thing. And do right. And I mean, certainly, so, and we set the pattern at the beginning uh -huh. of uh, of the council when I was president when we regionalized the radio uh, emergency dispatch system right. with Waterford. And, uh, and that, that took some doing to get that done. It wasn't warmly welcomed at first by the old guard in the city, <laughs> <Right>. okay? <laughs> um, you know, naturally, the, the, you know, the feeling is, we, we, no, we're going to build our own radio system. New London can have its own radio system. Well, he hello, Waterford just finished investing $8 million in a radio system, w Ooh. which included like five or six towers. Yeah, it yeah. covers, completely it covers, covers New the, London. It covers the area, everything. Yeah, fabulous. It's set up. What we got to do is, uh, you know, work on our 
radios and, and, right. and integrate with their system and work out a service agreement it is much better than recreating a whole another infrastructure to, uh, for emergency communications within our little five square miles. That was a success. I hope people realize that. Right. Now, if we could do that with an emergency radio communications, I mean, come on. We're talking about a dog pound. Dog should have been easy. It should have, but should've. instead we, we, you know, yeah. we, we, and there was no, the council didn't, need, council was not even aware that that project was going on. The gentleman that's yeah, crawling, yeah. He, he, he obviously has educated himself on the facts, but um, can that be reopened? Well, I hope it's reopened in the voters' minds. Um, well, well, I want to reopen before the election. Yeah, well, it's, it's one of those factors that I hope the voters consider because it's, well, it's a leadership issue and it's a, it's a respect for, it's one sure. issue I think where our charter wasn't respected, our ordinances weren't respected. And to turn around and use as an excuse, this is how it's always been done. First, I don't agree with that because I had a good deal of respect for our former purchasing agent. I don't agree with that. Um, but it's also not an excuse. Uh, I can't use as, I can't follow you. Mm -hmm and take over your job, and I look and I see, well, he was doing his job unethically or improperly or illegally, and so does that mean I can continue to do the job unethically, immorally, or illegally? Of course not. You know, I can, it's not an excuse, especially if I know how it's supposed to be done. Could you go before the council and say, I want to reopen this case. There's enough evidence there to prove I think. I think. I think I think citizens have to do that. I think we, the voters, and stuff well, like that. How many? I, mean, I, I can't, can't get. I have to go to a council or something to, to <laughs> show me the rule. I'll be I'll be glad to go down there on a Monday night and uh, and vent myself. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, that's. I, I think you got. I think we got to go. And uh, uh, you could even get a petition together and get a few people and say, uh, let's go down there and uh, say we want to move on this. We want. Well, I want it done before. Right? The election time, well, so we get these black the, people let me ask the, let me, out there. And let me ask the prove my case. Let me ask the caller this question: do you, Are you able to watch the council meetings on either? Yeah, oh yes, I, yes, I do. Okay, so you know how it works then. There is public comment, um, and you can come, and you can raise the issue in front of the right. council. I I know that Councilor Olson was as frustrated as I was, um, but quite frankly. We just, it comes to, when you're dealing with a council, it comes down to votes. To vote. And right. then it comes, to, when you know, when you're on the losing side of it, you know, I can count noses. That's what <laughs> they say in this business. You know, can you count noses? And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes you can play Don Quixote, and I've done that. Um, when, I make, when, I make a <laughs> when I make a comment, you know, if I make a comment to you at city council night, then when you, then, then you make a comment, you should be come out. You're going to be my voice. I'm, a, I'm the voice to you. Now you're going to be the voice to the other city council. I think he's right. I think we ought to get into this. Is that, is, will it work that way? Yeah, that'll work. But that'll there's, work. We, uh, I, I got less than a minute. I, uh, I wish I had called earlier. Okay, I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to go off the air. I, okay. really, I really appreciate No, I really do. Maybe you'll uh, show up at the lot meeting uh, the 20th of January. Uh, we uh, that, uh, maybe. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to be there, by the way. I am planning to be Mike there. Mike is going to be Will there. Will you plan to be there? Yes. Yeah. I'll be there to see you. All right, introduce yourself to me. I sure will, Michael. Thank you for the time. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Wow. Well, we're just about out of time. We I got a minute. Michael. It went by fast. It thank you very much. Always, always thank fast. You, right. Dominic, thanks, thanks again. Uh, who we got next week? Uh, we got Dennis uh, Bradley. Dennis and Bradley Car and, and Carol Car Vermont. Vermont, NAACP. Yep. We're going to end up talking about racism, stuff like that. We had great shows on that. Right, Dennis is going to talk about uh, putting in legislation. We're going to talk about jobs. Come and see me next week. God bless you all. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Amen. <laughs>